When you think of lively nanofish, usually it's like danios, lie bears, things that like to swim up up top, right? But what about an energetic bottom dweller? Keep watching as I introduce you to my new favorite fish, the dwarf chain loach. Hi, my name is Irene with Girl Talks Fish, here with practical tips on nanofish and planted aquariums. And if you remember last year, this was called the Shy Guy's Jungle Tank because I mostly kept, well, shy fish. So when I redid the tank, I definitely wanted to try species that were a little more lively and entertaining. Now for the bottom layer of the tank, I almost always go with corridors because they're so derpy, happy-go-lucky, get along with everyone. But this time I wanted to try a little more exotic species, the dwarf chain loach. Dwarf chain loaches are one of the smallest loaches that you can get in the aquarium hobby. They have a very slender body, these little barbels around their mouth to help them look for food. And of course, what always caught my eye was that very distinctive dark or black chain pattern running down the side of their body. Unfortunately, you are supposed to get a large school of them and they're kind of pricey. I thought, I think I got mine for about nine to $10, but that's a big improvement because I looked at footage I took back in 2016 and they were selling for $20 each then. So clearly the fish farms have figured out how to mass produce them in captivity because this is an endangered species. Like all my fish, I took them home and quarantined them, treating them proactively with the Quarantine Med Trio because it does treat one of the common loach diseases, ick. However, another common disease is skinny loach disease. And I did notice that my loaches were a little bit on the thin side. So just in case they had round worms, I went ahead and also treated them with Levamisol, which I have a whole video about over here. For conservation reasons, the natural habitat of the dwarf chain loach in Thailand is a well-kept secret. But from the pictures that we see, it kind of looks like they come from rivers and streams in the forest areas that are very well oxygenated. There's a sandy, rocky substrate that is covered by a lot of leaf litter and driftwood. If you've never kept loaches before, they're like little water puppies that do great in a large pack. Typically, I recommend getting six to 10 of them, so a larger size school, which means even though they're about two inches each, probably the minimum tank size would be 20 gallons or more. If you keep them in too small of a group, they can get stressed and become either withdrawn or maybe even a little aggressive with other tank mates. But if you keep them in a large group, you get to see a lot of their natural behaviors, this social hierarchy they form, they'll shadow each other, play follow the leader. It's really, really amazing to see. As you can see, they do great in a planted aquarium setup where there's plenty to explore and climb and hide under during bedtime. However, I did notice when I tried to plant a baby Amazon sword in the corner, they kept bumping into it accidentally while they were chasing each other and it would uproot constantly. So I ended up having to get some plant weights, which I used to weigh down the base of the Amazon sword. And then I put a little ring of lava rocks around the base just until the sword could get more well rooted. Most websites recommend that you keep them from 75 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit, but then Rachel O'Leary says they can go hot, 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 like discus level 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine's just at the normal 78. And then pH range is also very, very wide, 5.5 all the way to 8.0. Because they have barbels like Corydoras, you may want to keep them on sandy substrate or rounder pieces of gravel, but I have them on EcoComplete here and they are doing well and haven't lost any of their whiskers. Also, despite the fact that they are bottom dwellers, they definitely love to explore, including outside of your aquarium if you let them. So make sure you have that tight, tight lid. I haven't personally seen any jumping behavior, but I did notice one time one of the dwarf chain loaches was clinging onto the side of the glass like a hillstream loach. I had no idea they could do that, so be careful. As with mini loaches, they have these little spines that can poke out from the bottom of their eyes if they feel threatened. So just something to be aware of when you're netting or trying to catch them out. And then for foods, they are omnivores, but they prefer foods on the meatier side of things. Like in the wild, they'll be eating bugs, little crustaceans and other invertebrates. So at home, I feed them all sorts of um, community foods. They'll pretty much eat anything. So things like krill flakes, we've got nano pellets, frozen blood worms, rapashi gel food is a good one, as well as freeze dried 
tube effects worms. Anything they can fit in their mouth or take a bite out of, they will eat. Not picky. A common question that gets asked is, they're really small for loaches. Will they eat snails? In general, most loaches that have that really pointed kind of face that's perfect for diving into a snail shell will eat snails. So I've actually seen footage on YouTube, you can look it up yourself, where they love to go after little tiny snails, and even the bigger ones, they will kind of pester or bug them possibly to death. So mix these fish with snails at your own risk. While they are very energetic and constantly moving, I wouldn't say that they outcompete my other fish for food, if that's something you're worried about. For example, if I put a chunk of rapashi gel food in, the live bears, of course, but also the autosynclus and the hillstream loaches, they'll all come and kind of eat over the main chunk, whereas the dwarf chain loaches kind of hang out at the outskirts, catching any crumbs that are flying through the air. Loaches often get a bad rap for being boisterous, which means they're very rowdy, kind of unruly. They might um, bully or bother or even fin nip some slower fish in the community tank. However, since again, dwarf chain loaches are one of the smallest loaches available, I haven't seen any bullying behavior from them. I will note that they are very curious though. So anytime I add a new fish to the aquarium, they're one of the first ones to investigate and it looks like they're swimming up and maybe fin nipping them, but I haven't seen any holes or tears. I think honestly, they're just going up to take a smell <laughs> to see like, what are you? What are you doing? In fact, I actually keep these dwarf chain loaches with a long finned, very slow moving betta fish named Sonic. And after the initial, again, investigation where they went up and smelled him, they haven't bothered him at all. And they're, they've learned mostly to stay out of his way. As for breeding, I haven't had a lot of experience with it, so I can only tell you what I've read, which is in order to sex them, females, much like Corridors, tend to be a larger, fuller bodied, but probably the easiest way to make sure you have both sexes would be to just get a large colony of them. It doesn't sound like a lot of people have been successful in breeding them at home, but I did find an article that talked all about his experiences, so I'll link that in the description below. Would I recommend the Dwarf Chain Loach? Yes. Absolutely, with some caveats. One, you've gotta make sure you have the room and money to get a large school of them. And then two, they can sometimes be a little annoying. So you just wanna take a look at the tank mates and making make sure they're not becoming too bothersome. In my tank, you know, the live bears, they don't care. They are happy-go-lucky, nothing bothers them. The betta fish, Sonic, he can hold his own. So they are doing A-OK -okay great. If you love loaches as much as I do, definitely check out my other care videos over here on different species I have covered. Also a huge thanks to Adrian for becoming my latest Patreon supporter. Just to let you guys know, I will be switching over from Patreon to YouTube membership, so be on the lookout for that. Take time to enjoy your aquariums and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.